Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Blender. And in this one, we're going to be looking at creating the water to go inside this fountain. And I'll give you a link to download the Blender scene to get you started. So let's begin. So when you open up the Blender scene, it should look like this. So the first thing I want to do is to set up an emitter object. So I'm going to come to add mesh and select UV sphere. Now this can be really basic. So let's go for six segments and six rings and we can make it very small. So 0.1 for the radius. So it's currently sitting down here somewhere, but I actually want it here in my spout. So what I'm going to do is set the Z location to 12.6 and the X location to 1.12. So it's now sitting in there and the water can be emitted by that sphere. So the next thing we need to do is to set up the fluid simulation. And what we could do is we could add our own fluid domain, but there's a much easier way of doing it. And that's to come to object and quick effects and quick liquid. And this automatically does it all for us. You'll notice that it switched us into wireframe mode and it's given this box here, which is the liquid domain. You see it's created that up here and it's automatically changed the sphere. You see that's now got a modifier on it to if we come down to the physics properties, that's this one here, you'll see that it's applied a fluid simulation to that. So there are two things we want to do here. First of all, we want to make sure the fluid mesh is set to planar, otherwise this is not going to work. And we also want to switch the flow behavior to inflow. So it's a continuous flow of water. Otherwise it'll just be a kind of splash and it'll just release the water all in one go and then stop. But we want to kind of have it keep going. So that's why we're switching that to inflow. The next thing we want to do is to scale this domain so it's large enough to contain all the water that we want to simulate, but not so large that it's going to slow everything down too much. So what we're going to do is come over and adjust its scale here. First of all, I'm just going to reset the location. So that's backspace. We'll, we'll reset that. Similarly, backspace to reset that scale. And what we're going to do is have an X scale of 3.6 and a Y and a Z scale of 6.5. And that's going to make it large enough. Uh, you could do this all by eye, but I'm just making life a little bit easier by giving you the numbers. So then we want to adjust its position. So an X position of 3.6 and a Z, Z position of 6.5. And it should be obvious why we're using those numbers. So now it's sitting on the floor of our scene and it's large enough. If we turn on X-ray mode, you can see it's large enough to encompass the spout out of which the water is going to come. So now if we come back to the start of the timeline, uh, back to here, we're in layout mode, which obviously gives us these nice controls here, playback controls. So we'll play back the animation and you'll see that the water sort of falls down out of the spout and it bounces around inside the domain. So once it hits the floor, it's sort of bouncing around. Now you'll notice it's just run out at that point and that's because we need to come back to the liquid domain scroll down and we need to set the start and end range. So I'm going to set, or rather we need to set the end range. So I'm going to set that end to 330. So then we want to include obviously these bowls in, in the simulation. So it's flowing out of this bowl into this larger one and down into this bottom basin. So what we can do is to add fluid simulations to each of these items. So I'm going to select the upper bowl and we're in the physics properties here. I'm going to select fluid and the type wants to be effector. And again, we want to turn on is planar. So again, we've come back to the beginning now. You'll see that the fluid sort of hits this bowl and then spills over it. Now you'll notice that it's very inaccurate. It's a long way away from the actual surface of the bowl and I'll explain shortly why that is and what we can do to 
change it. So let's carry on down. We need to select the lower bowl. So lower bowl there. Again, select fluid. Again, select effector for the type. Again, turn on is planar. And let's just do that for the basin as well. Select fluid, select effector for the type and is planar. So now if we come back to the beginning, we can press play. The water flows out from the top bowl into the lower bowl and then falls out of the lower bowl and into the basin at the bottom. So another little tweak I'd like to make is to have the water flow out a little bit faster. So I'm going to come to the sphere, which is the water emitter. And if we come down here, you'll, you'll see we've got an initial velocity. And if we turn that on, it allows us to set the initial velocity. And, and the water just doesn't just flow through gravity. It's got a little bit of, of speed going with it. So I'm going to set that uh, x value to 0.75 and the z value, which is the downward direction, to negative one. So it's flowing faster downwards and it'll just fill up our bowl a little bit faster, like so. So at the moment, we're just using playback to create the simulation, but we actually want to change that uh, because it's going to make my life a lot easier. So if we come back to the liquid domain, liquid domain selected and physics properties, let's come down and make a few adjustments here. One of the things I want to do is I want to change the uh, simulation method from flip to APIC or however you pronounce that. And for this particular animation, I just think I prefer the result that I get. It's less splashy, but uh, by all means, experiment with which one you prefer. What I want to do, though, is I want to come down here to the cache section. It's got a default cache directory, but you might actually want to just click on this and set up your own cache directory. But it's a good idea to know where your cache lives so that uh, you can uh, manage it. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the type from replay, whereby whenever I uh, if I want to restart the simulation, I've got to basically run the timeline again to from replay to modular, and then I want to click is resumable. And this means we can just bake part of our simulation and we can stop and resume as we want. So click on that. And now you'll notice that if we scroll up again, we now have the option to bake data. So if I do that, you'll see that it steams through computing the simulation. We don't actually see anything during this process, but we will once it's finished. We can then play it back, and that's actually playing back out of the cache, and it's going to be much smoother and faster. And the reason this is important is because we can't obviously live with what we've got here with this simulation. It's just too crude, and the way we can change that is to free up the data, first of all, so we need to undo the cache that we've just created and then increase the resolution divisions. Now, what I'm going to go with for this tutorial is resolution divisions of 1 to 8, but actually you're probably better off going up to something like 256 if your machine can manage it and it's going to look, everything's going to look better. The start point of this is going to look much, much more accurate and fine. And you're going to have much more detail in your water. So the downside of this, of course, is that more resolution is going to take a lot longer. So this is going to be quite a few minutes to bake. And you might actually find the simulation falls over and crashes. And if that does happen to you, you might want to consider coming down here into the advanced tab here just below the cache section and switching the compression to zip. It, it's just a bit more reliable. So then I'm going to come and bake this and I'll come back when it's done. So hit the bake button there. So here is the simulation completed and you'll notice how much better that gap is now. It's There's still a gap and you could improve that by upping the resolution. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to improve it by adjusting the Z offset of the liquid domain, just so it sits down into that bowl a little bit more. So I'm going to go for 6.4 on that 
Z location. And you can see that's now a much better fit. The only issue that we then have is that the spout is a little bit too high, or this, this uh, rose effect. So I'm going to come into here, that collection that's got the spout in it, select the spout, and I'm going to just drop that Z position down, negative 0.14 and it's kind of slightly more in touch with the with the water that's been computed. You'll notice that we've still got the water is a little bit too big and again that's down to do that's down to the resolution. It's kind of it's overflowing our spout despite the fact that our emitter is actually quite small. And again the the the, the finer the resolution the more accurately it's going to emit from the emitter. So anyway, that's actually looking really quite nice, but that's only sort of half of the process. What we need to do now is to bake the mesh. So let's come back to the liquid domain, come back to physics properties, obviously. What we're going to do is come down to the mesh section here and enable that section by clicking the checkbox. And there's just one little tweak I want to do here and that's going to help matters but it's going to give us better resolution droplet resolution so I'm going to increase the up res factor to four and drop the particle radius down to one and if you trust me that is actually going to look a little bit better the next thing we want to do is hit the bake mesh button and again that's going to take a while to process so I'll come back when it's done so now that our mesh has been rendered, we can actually start to see how this is actually looking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and just render the image. So render image and the result we get is this and it doesn't look great. Let's come over and look at what shader has actually been applied. So it will actually be the liquid domain material like that. It's automatically applied it when we use that quick, quick effect. And you'll see that it's basically just a glass a shader. It's got the right index of refraction here for water, which is 1.33. But otherwise, it's just not looking right. So basically, the problem is that uh, our renderer is set to EV. So if we, we look here on the, the, the render properties, you'll see the render engine, is, render engine is EV. And actually, what we need is to switch to cycles for this particular shader to work. Now, if we were to stick with the defaults, uh, where we've got this max samples of 4K, this would take a really, really long time for each frame. But the reality is we don't actually need such a high number unless we're trying to render a, a movie effect. In actual fact, we can go a really low with it uh, if we're prepared to put up with a little bit of noise. So for the purposes of this, I'm actually going to go down to eight samples, that's quite a drop. And now if I render the image, you'll see, you can probably see the samples counting up here. So four, five, six, seven, and eight, and we're done. And you can see how much better that water looks. And it's just going to be a much better result. So this is what you need to do. Go with as many samples as you feel like you can cope with. But effectively, each time you double that, you're doubling the time it takes to render the frame. So there you go, that's pretty much the, the whole scene done. Uh, I've actually already set you up with a camera, so uh, you'll see here that the, the camera is tracking back like so, so we get to see the whole of the fountain uh, as, it's, as the water splashes out. But you could obviously come into that camera there and, and, and change the, the animation. So I hope that's been a useful overview of fluid simulation. Obviously, the more patient you're prepared to be, the better the end result is going to look. So thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again next time.